You're welcome back. This is News Friday, your most authoritative news analysis platform. And um, let's quickly go to the NCC, that's the National Commission on Civic Education. And they have been speaking about, you know, and challenging the governing NPP to demonstrate commitment to the rule of law by causing the arrest of vigilante group Delta Force, as um, they describe the situation as a, a rising a situation that is getting the nation into a dangerous, you know, uh, state. They had earlier spoken about the adoring of similar groups by the NDC in Kumasi, and you can remember how they were they were taken to the cleanest by the NDC. Now it is a turn of the NPP. Uh, so let's hear Josephine Kroma. Political party vigilantes have no place or space in our democratic culture. Therefore, the leadership of the NPP must demonstrate to the people of Ghana that the law applies equally to all by actively pursuing security agencies and the judiciary to swiftly and decisively prosecute vigilante groups. Political party leaders must genuinely exhibit to Ghanaians that they do respect the rule of law. They must show commitment to peace and national stability by disbanding immediately all militant groups within their rank and file. Enough of the lip service to the rule of law. The NCC holds the considered view that the apparent leniency with which Delta Force vigilantes were handled when they struck at law courts to free their fellow perpetrators has further emboldened them to continue to act with such impunity. The NCC will not cease to condemn, name and shame vigilantism and all acts of lawlessness because of the risk it poses to the country's democratic stability, social security, investor confidence, and peaceful coexistence of all Ghanaians, amongst other factors. This, for us, is a national crisis. The security agencies must hasten investigations into the latest incident and bring the deviant to book. Right, so that's the, the, the chairperson of the NCCE. And on social media, particularly, many fell in love with the NCC uh, this week, as they did earlier, when they took on the NDC boldly. So why, what prompted the NCC's comments? Take a look at this and also listen to Jafar Saeed, leader of the Delta Force. Jafar Saeed, 2016. In 2016, we were promised jobs and other things. But for the past two years, he has neglected us. Whenever we call him, he refuses to pick up. He is receiving huge salaries. But those who helped him recapture power have been left with nothing. This was actually the third time he was visiting the constituency after winning power. We then decided to go and meet him, but we were stopped, so we decided to disrupt the meeting. Right. Okay, so the, the last one that I want you to pay attention to is Dr. Antonio Kutose, the man who was at the center of it all. Let's hear him. And it, right before we really got into the meat of the meeting, I, I heard some noise, sound of motorbike. And I saw one of them, 
uh, Odifo hitting a table with a chair. So I, we, we moved back a bit. And then there was sort of helter skelter. So I left the area. After a few minutes, they wanted me to continue the meeting. And I said, no, I, I, I will not continue the meeting, but they can continue. I understand that uh, the guy who was leading the event, he's on the Af a list of people employed by Af Afroestation. So if he has issues as a chairman, he should go to the uh, area coordinators. They will inform the executives. And we'll have a meeting like we had yesterday. You, you don't come and disrupt a meeting and say that you were coming to meet with me. How do you meet with somebody by banging chairs on the table? That cannot be a meeting. That is why I'm suggesting to you that it means that it, it is not him or only that is part of the, uh, what I think is a conspiracy. A conspiracy to, to do what? I don't know what they're trying to uh, destroy my credibility. I don't know what it is, but it, it cannot be that he is not aware of what's going on. Making false accusations like I'm trying to destabilize Akufazu government itself suggests to me that it, it, it cannot be. So you think it's somebody from your party who is behind this? I, I cannot say, but it, 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 my suspicion is that it's, it's more than one individual. Right, so Dr. Antonia Kutose is the MP for uh, Tafu Pankrono, and he's the one who... Uh, was nearly suffered at the hands of these uh, guys. Well, we know that two persons have been arrested. They were taken to court and slapped with three uh, charges, including uh, conspiracy to assault and actually doing so and damaging property. And then they sought bail and bail was denied. Their lawyer complained about it. But let's uh, begin from here. Yes, yes, Ben. What, what do you say about these developments? And do you think that the NCC is out to succeed in asking the political parties to disband these groups? Something. The guy say, call not Jatabinule. If you go and get a you know, tiger cub and you play with it, you grow up like doctors supposed to be friendly. When they get out of control, that's what you do. One of the Koto says, view, I suspect that you know between now and next year there will be primaries for internal primaries to elect parliamentary candidates and for once i don't think that he's blaming an opposition party he's on the ground and i suspect that it's somebody who perhaps has an eye on that seat with others who may want to destabilize you but i think that the history of vigilantism is what can disturb our body politic, not coup d'etat again. Because here are people who come out with the effrontery, either at the MDC or MPP, do things and hit their chest. If you look at the ages of the two who were incarcerated, uh, refused bail and remanded in uh, police custody or prison custody, 49 years and 51. <laughs> Are they saying that all these years they have nothing to do? And I'm hoping that President Kufa, when he comes, he will take a choice between two opposing views in the MPP. Sami Ewuku's view that Vilantis across political parties, Sami, sorry I'm putting you on the spot, but right. it's a good point, good point that vigilantism has no place in our body politic, be it MPP or NDC, or the president will side with Babi Asamoah, the newly appointed MPP communications director, that they cannot disband data forces and other groups because they are behaving like association of freight forwarders. I'm waiting for freight forwarders to tell us if that's how they operate. Or a retired army officer, Major Jericho Duo, saying that these groups cannot be disbanded. When the president comes, I'll be very happy if he will tell us whether he belongs to Sami Uku's view in the party or he supports Babi Asamoa and Derek Odu. These are my opening comments. Mm -hmm. Roxon, and I, I don't know, we have a difficulty in not calling them what I, I wish we should be calling them. <laughs> I agree with you. Hooligans. So hooliganism is violent, it's rowdy, it's destructive behavior by young troublemakers, typically 
in a gang. Their actions border on criminal trespass, assault, damage to property and against public order. A vigilante, on the other hand, is a member of a self-appointed group of citizens who undertake law enforcement in their community without legal authority, typically because the legal agencies are thought to be inadequate. I'm quoting from one of my takes earlier. Now, I, I suppose I'm in position. That. Oh, very well. But, huh? but I've read uh, some accounts that have been attributed to you right. uh, in the media uh, calling for the dissolution of such groups within the various political parties. And I'm in full support. What troubles me is the fact that since, since about January or February 2017, particularly when the incidents of <coughs> the party people from within the MPP were engaged in certain dastardly acts. And we were told that they were vigilante groups. Indeed, we were told that every region has a name for, for the said group. And we were recording the incidents, region by region, community to community. There were so many calls first directed at the party to call them to order, and further directed at CSOs and statutory bodies and constitutional bodies like the NCE to, to speak against such acts. NCC was silent. And so uh, two years down the line, NDC also found, found it necessary to ask it to uh, resurrect some of our boys in this manner. And suddenly we hear NCC speaking. NCC got it wrong when they say that the fine imposed on the group that attacked the court, the circuit court in Kumasi, was very lenient. In fact, the group, the people who attacked the court have never been found. The people who were arraigned before court and subsequently pled guilty and were fined were the group that attacked the regional security coordinator in his office. When they were taken to court, the other group that came, that stormed the court and forcibly released them, when were not found. Some persons were found, but were told, were told by the attorney general, the evidence gathered against those group of people were said that they could not prosecute the matter successfully. And so they were, they were released. And we were told that the, the investigations were ongoing. And that when they gather further investigations and, the, and the, the persons, the two perpetrators were found, they would be prosecuted. We are yet to either um, hear about the, the gathering of the further investigations concerning the initial 14 that were supposed to have attacked the court to be prosecuted, or the fact that the persons who were truly who truly attacked the court and have absconded have been arrested and therefore will be arraigned. That's where we are in that matter. We have allowed this phenomenon to, to develop deep roots within our political system. And now it appears that there's a public outcry against it. As political parties, what can we do? Are we really committed to approving that? I think the NDC, we made the efforts. I have to say so. Mm. We made, yes, we made the efforts. You did? Yes, we did. Okay, hold on one minute. Uh, listen to a seed in Ketia. That's your. No, let me. That's your general no, no, secretary. No, no, let me right? finish. Hold, hold, on. Hold, on. hold on. No, 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 no. Let me you know finish. What? You know what? My submission will be in contest. Yes. Let me finish. Yes, yes. Let me finish. I am moderating this we, show. Yes. Let's do it this way. No, no, but don't Let's do it this way. Don't truncate Roxen, my. No, Roxen. no, don't truncate you my. You are not submission. being truncated. No. If on you the, bring in a seed in point that the NDC, you are doing well. Yes. In this front, we have done listen well. to listen to Esiedun Ketia, who is your general secretary. Listen to him.
I endorse it fully as a proper response for the incarcitrance of the ruling government and their refusal to do anything about the vigilantes on the MPP side. You realize that for two years now, we have all been complaining about the rising incidence of vigilantism in this country. The president promises that something will be done and nothing gets done. Some of us have uh, been affected by vigilante attack and yet nothing, nobody was, had been held responsible as we speak to you now. Mm. And they are now in charge of the security services and they still maintain party vigilantes terrorizing people left, right and center and all the security services are quiet. Even when you take steps to report, they don't take any action. So are you saying that we on the NDC side, because we are good citizens, we should keep quiet for MPP to control the army, to control the, the police, and to control everybody. But that's not a way to go, General. Please, please. So I, as a General Secretary, think that the appropriate response that will force the government and force civil society, force uh, religious leaders, force traditional leaders to all let us come around one table to think about vigilantism is for people to take steps to defend themselves by also forming their vigilantes. I am in support of that response. Exactly. Now, we were accused of forming Azoka boys. That's how well you have done. Yes, hold on. Okay. And so, for a very long time, that group had been disbanded. The Azoka boys were disbanded. Really? Yes. When? Oh, why? <laughs> when was the you last time? You disband them, and then a couple of weeks ago, you, you introduced new groups in Kumasi. Did you listen to JS? That's the point I'm making. When we were called upon to disband them, we did. And then when the MPP came back, they now resorted the phenomenon and even <laughs> ensured that every region now had a group. <laughs> and every, every constituency was also forming a group. And for two years, we've been crying that, let us let let this be checked. Civil society won't speak. The president assures us that he's instructed the security services to deal with them. Incidents happen. We hear they are apprehended, and nothing. We don't hear of any any proper trial. Sometimes when it happens, we 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 hear that the people. Yes, we know the perpetrators, but we cannot apprehend them. All these sort of things. So the party decided that well, the best way to 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 also take care of ourselves is to form our own groups. That is why the general secretary is saying, yes, it is a response to the phenomenon that has entrenched itself within the MPP. And, and you endorse and this position as, 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 as I, wait, wait, wait. I have wait, been a victim. Wait, wait, yes. wait. You just a while ago told us about how you were a lawyer and a friend of the court exactly. and all of that. Exactly. You, in your private personal capacity, yes. and also as a lawyer and a legislator, yes. you endorse S.A. Drinketia's view. Did you hear him? He says it is a response. So once once it is NDC is also responding, then it will now it will now serve as a wake up call. That's not the that, answer I, I sought from you. Of course. Do you endorse this position? I, why? I I I I premise my submission by saying I am not in support, but I'm giving a submission in contest. I suffered this when you can't say when, a yes or no to the question I just asked you. He just expressed the view. Which is supposed to be a view for the party. I'm his, asking you, his do, position, do you his it? position is that once we are also forming it, it will serve as a wake up call. And do you endorse that? So, yes, because otherwise we will not wake up okay. as a nation. When you don't hear that NDC is also forming as a lawyer groups. and as a legislator, you endorse lawlessness. Oh, I am not endorsing lawlessness. I am so I am making my submission in contest. General is saying that forming vigilantes within the NDC. It's a response to the fact that the, the MPP has formed it, they are causing mayhem, and nothing is happening. By your understanding of the law, if people do wrong and commit criminal acts of trespass and assault, what should happen to them? The, the action should they be should, that they should, the you, action you should, should be organized yourself. No, 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 no. And then also. No, no. The action should be investigated. Mm. If evidence are found mm. to suggest that there's indeed an offense that has been committed. The people are tried. Okay. If there's a judicial establishment, so the solution is not what uh, Sidney Ketia is proposing. Which he's you telling you, he's telling you that you see the formation of the groups does not itself constitute a crime. It is the activities of the group that constitute that very often leads to the commission do of you, a crime. Do you sincerely think that this is a good demonstration of leadership? 
that you know the law. It is not and about you leadership. Are it is about you phenomenon. are a lawmaker. No, it's about, it's you are a about lawmaker. A political, you are a lawmaker. Political you know the phenomenon. law. You are no, a lawmaker. Sam, you, lo you know Sam, the law. Sam. You are seeking the mandate of the people of Ghana yes. to provide them leadership. <coughs> yes. And you say this is how you intend to do it. So put the law what, aside. If, uh, we are not putting put the, the law, law aside, aside and no, do what Sam, is lawless. You've asked me a question. Let me answer. Okay, go ahead. We are not. We are not sidestepping the law. We are telling you that. There's, we have a, a socio-political situation that is pervasive in the, on the other side, within the other side. We've been, we've been calling on civil society, chiefs, opinion leaders, stakeholders, to call on the MPP, not even the government. You don't think civil society is tired of doing this call? They have done it so... It's, that is why the general is saying mm. that if they hear that NDC is also preparing or is forming such groups, then now they will listen to us and say that let us come to the discussion table and see if indeed we can take a, a common decision to disband the groups within the two major political parties. That is the point he's making. And that's good leadership? Why? He thinks that that's the best solution out of the situation because he hasn't formed, he's disbanded these old groups a long time ago. New ones have been formed within the MPP. They are causing trouble. He's been calling on even the generality of the people to call on the MPP to disband it. You have key people from the party say they will not. Mm. Indeed, even before Freddie Bray well, became the substantive chairman, when he was the acting chairman, he supported the idea that they can never disband the, the groups. Mm. So what do you expect the NDC to do? That is the perspective that I want you to bring on the matter. Okay. Indeed, I have been a victim. When, when my, my, my building was demolished, in, in, at Frafraha, mm -hmm. a group came. They, some were in military fatigue and police. They came in police registered vehicles. I took the vehicle numbers, two vehicles. I, I, I wrote to the police headquarters. They told me that they don't know such vehicles. They, don't also, they have not also sanctioned any such operation at Frafraha on, on, on the said date. The military high command also said the people who came <coughs> in the military for, they have not deployed any men for any such operation at that hour. So my suspicion is that the people who came there that day wielding guns, purporting to be in, in police fatigue as well as military fatigue, were actually not official. You mean but those who claimed they were doing that on behalf of the state housing company? Exactly. You know, so this and, and the state housing company has not come out to speak about this matter. We are in court in the matter. I, I know some you people know, are in court. We are, yeah. we are in court in the matter. So it's a, it's a very serious matter. That people can actually be in military fatigue and happy. And you see, when you see a soldier or you see a policeman, it's not even the tag that makes you feel that he's, he's either a policeman or not. It is the records at the police station that will confirm that, yes, indeed, this man is on our records I see. as a serving police officer. So, so when you, no. you've been in court, what, what, in their defense, are they saying they don't know about these demolitions and that they are not, oh, oh, they they are not something that they, they love? They claim, they claim that the land is theirs. Of course. I mean, <laughs> yeah. you know, you I know ask you because I'm yes. aware. Yes. You, you know, know, one of them wrote to them and they wrote back explaining why they did what yes. they had exactly. to do and felt was justified. It's exactly. Right. And that people but, were But the point I'm making is that I am not, it's not about the mm. SHC that right. I wrote to. Right. I saw policemen. I right. took photographs. Okay. Saw vehicles. Okay. With with GP so and so and so. So I mm. took photographs. Right. And I wrote for confirmation that did you indeed deploy mm. such men to this so and so? Yeah, you are, you are basically saying this is the basis to I, have a counter group. Exactly. Okay. You know. Sorry? So so yeah. I, my point is that yes, we need to disband mm. because if we are not very careful, it will degenerate to a situation where one day we we'll wake up. And um, we'll have problems on our civil insurrection on our hands. Interesting. Yes, yes. so some, um, I, I don't know when you came to now take a decision uh, in the manner in which you have spoken in the, in the week about how right. you, clearly, you clearly are seen to be disowning these guys. But earlier, <laughs> like uh, yeah. Roxanne refers to when these things were happening, I remember... Uh, Freddie Blay, when the thing happened in the, at the port, Freddie Blay came forward and said they were doing an Article 41F job, which is um, to, as it were, export and, and combat corruption, clearly endorsing them. I remember you also giving an interview and clearly showing that these are people who deserve to, f to find place and be given jobs and so on and so forth. We have had members of your party come publicly to admit that they were funding them 
and that the attempt to prosecute them in Kumasi was in bad faith. Well, first, first of all, what's, what has changed? First of all, I, I don't know where I'm, I'm, I'm told to have made that statement of disbanding these groups. First of all. Okay. Because the last time I spoke on this matter, it was on Ghana Connect. And the records are there. When I was asked, so these, should these groups be disbanded? My position was that disbanding these groups will mean nothing if there's no orientation. So I'm not too sure where I'm being told that Sami is saying disband these groups and Yabwabi is saying they are straightforward. <laughs> that does not mean that there's no common position on this matter. I have resisted the temptation that uh, disbanding these groups will be an end to this solution. The names can change. If the NDC is telling you today they've disbanded Azoka, <laughs> in quotes, but have formed hawks and lions to replace Azoka, it's debit and credit. you back to square one. <laughs> but I come to this particular topic with, with an open heart and with all sincerity. The history of these groups, it didn't emanate or start from 2017. If, 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 if we are going to do a just and an honest analysis of these matters. In the 60s, you had the, the veranda boys and the young pioneers, more or less, mobilized to support a political cause and an administration. In the 90s, you had the Mobi Squad, the People's Defense Committees, the Workers' Defense Committees, and all. But just, the 60s, just, a just to remind you, you had Martin Mihu and so on. No problem, no problem. <laughs> I, just, I just want us to proceed from that tangent okay. that this is not a matter limited to 2017 or 2018. In the 2000s, then you had many of these groups now coming up. Then you have the Kandahar boys affiliated to the NPP, you had the Luta boys the affiliated to the NDC, you had the Al Qaeda boys that of NDC, you had the Bewa youth associated with the NDC, you had the Al Jazeera group associated with the NDC, you had the Hawks and the Lions now. Then you also had that of the Invisible, the Delta Force, and the uh, and some others. The invisible and Delta appear to be more no, no, no. better so, organized. So I'm coming, that's what I'm saying. They I want, a, I want they to have come, a national I want and to regional come to structure. This, but I don't think so. Okay. I want to come to this position. Me, I will never on any day disown these boys that I don't know them. Because that will not be the solution. The solution for me as national organizer of the ruling party, how I can get these my boys or these members or these groups associated or affiliated with us to give our government maybe positive support and image enhancing activities. But there's only them as national organizers, so am I going to go back to them in 2020 to help me mobilize? And when YB says that they are afraid for with this, we are, I'm, I'm, I'm not disagreeing with him. Why am I saying this? There are some of them who are electricians. There are some of them who are students. There are some of them who are this. But when it comes to uh, them supporting a program or being there as organizers, then they come under such an umbrella. So if YB says some of them are fit for this, it's not wrong. Is it not the case but that those who come under this sort of security, mm. so, so to so, speak, so, outfit, yes. are promised mm. factually that yeah. that's the situation? They are promised. I really want to deal with this issue extensively today. That when a party wins power, mm. they will find themselves in the organized national security, as in police well, and, see, and the military. The, 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 Immigration the, the, and yes, so on. Uh, coming back to this topic. Uh, you are right that when a political party wins an election, the five fingers are not the same. Some can be accountants, some can be lecturers, some can be this, some can be that. But maybe some of them, all they want is, well, if there's a, a, an ongoing project, maybe their expertise as electricians or their expertise as plumbers, expertise as bricklayers, they can also support and be fixed in there. But something, there's, there's an interesting twist to this matter. No, but are you, are you suggesting that there mm. are people who are lecturers, who are part of these kind of groups? Oh, um, um, you know, that's what I'm saying. Because uh, we know the uh, kind of uh, class uh, they uh, belong uh, to uh, in uh, society. Don't be, don't, don't they be. don't belong to a lecturer groups. Uh, I'm saying yeah. that maybe uh, the use of the word mm. lecturer okay. uh, was an overblown one. Right. But I'm saying mm. that in these groups, both NDC and NPP, that's why I don't want us to limit ourselves to the NCC comments on just the NPP matter. Okay. Can we just, just do a, a, a something, just mm -hmm. uh, a quote from Yabwabi Asama so that he can incorporate it in the response. He said, yes, this is what he said on Joy News late evening program, PM Express, mm -hmm. on Wednesday. Yeah. He said, just the legal practitioner explained that the vigilante groups resort to a show of force 
because they do not have the pen power like other pro MPP groups whose approach to government is more intellectual. Mm. By using violence leads to blackmailing, and the government he noted and advised the groups to clean up their actions. So, so, so YB is right that more or less um, what they have to be doing is to support us to give the government a positive. If you say blackmail, but, but, no, but but YB said they should clean their actions. Right. And not and not subscribe to the use of force. So that if you are saying, the, that so be if the you are focus. saying, how successful have yes, you been with so, this? So that's now. why I'm coming to the topic. Right. I'm, I'm treating it extensively. First of all, what the political parties also act, they, they, what they lack is building of human capacity. Both NBC and MPP. Now you have many of these are uh, groups. That's what I'm saying. That because of the trend, because of the established norm. If today somebody is telling me that the invisible Delta Force issues should be separated from issues of the past, I'm, 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 I'm restricting to not discussing a particular matter. But I give you an example. In the heady days of 2015, when the MPP had our own fair share of internal crisis, our party's installations were attacked. Our headquarters was ransacked with ammunition that you cannot tell me that it belonged to that of the opposition. We lodged complaints with the police, and up to date, nothing was done about it. What our boys decided to do was then to provide cover to our installations. I'll give you an example. Then candidates Nanado Danko Kufuado, across the street is the Nima police station. People threw stones into the house, pelted his facility. Just across the street was Nima police station. Nobody was apprehended. So when you have such a culture where people act with impunity, under Professor Mills, NDC, DC for Yendi, MC for Yendi, was chased into the bush. The then ruling party couldn't act on the matter. So he emboldens people to now adopt the mindset that when your party is in government, you can also act with impunity. That's what I'm saying, the established norm. In Abu Bloshi, our supporters were murdered just in front of the police station. We complained, nothing was done about it. Chirpone by election. A gentleman shot indiscriminately. Then we were told he belonged to the national security. So when you have such a culture, you have a new party, you have a new government in place, and your boys also feel that when our colleagues in the NDC acted that way, they were not apprehended and nothing was done. But the NPP, we moved a step further, and I think we should be credited with some of these things. In Karaga, our own constituency executives who were found of a riotous behavior were put behind bars. It never happened under the previous administration. I take you to Wa in the Upper West. Had similar issue. I take you to Sesala. I take you to Kumasi again, where we have Delta Force. In 2016, John Boedu escaped death by a whisker, my acting general secretary, when he was attacked in the Sunafu so no executive. No, no, when he was acting. Okay. Mm. As general secretary, by supporters of um, Collins Dauda. John nearly lost his life. In Talency, I had absolutely no choice than to mobilize this, my, my, my men to support our party. The why? When we were attacked in Talency, we ran to the Minister for Interior, and he said violence beget violence. <laughs> Freddie Blay was assaulted. That's why I didn't want to go there. Till date, when my national chairman bows his head, he has blood oozing. He's been a victim of this attack. So when you have the security apparatus not doing anything about it, that's when you embolden. The blame should not be just on the political parties. The blame should be on the police and the security agencies. Mm -hmm. The president has said, don't, don't, don't expect us to prompt you before you act. But then in the same way, when you have people committing crime, crime has no color. I'm going to he do my part. He instructed them to. Mm. He said, don't be prompted, because that is your job, to, prevent, to protect lives and properties. But if just across the street, 10 meters from, from a presidential candidate's residence, the facility is attacked, and the police look unconcerned. In, I said in the Sunafu area or the SUTV area, when John was attacked, the policemen ran for their dear lives. So something, discussing this matter of, uh, 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 you call it vigilantism. I said many of these young men, when well, he made that we call it hooligans. Well, 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 yes, right. yes. So the NDC <laughs> cannot pretend that, oh, we have disbanded us. But I call the, the comments of the general secretary of the NDC very reckless and irresponsible. Because you see, where you sit as a genius, if you are saying, I fully endorse, and that whatever they are doing, I subscribe to There it. are people who are saying that, like, Siedun Ketia and Roxon here, mm -hmm. 
what they have done is mm. to refuse to be hypocritical about mm. the situation. Mm. You have you have labored yeah. to to be clear about the fact that you don't want to have to do any business with these groups. You have you have you have what, given what us. I, what do you I don't want to have any business doing with you, these? You groups. have you have gone a long way to tell us why it is necessary to have them. No, I, I'm saying that the orientation mm. has been emboldened because of the culture, the pattern that had been established. If you had a whole MC chased out of his office under Professor Mills. Then you have a similar thing being repeated under Nanado because this they were referring you there. This time minister. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. <laughs> so what happened in the past, the security agencies failed to act. What are you doing to change it? What I'm doing, I'm going to tell you. Uh, for where I sit as the man in charge of the party's organizational structure, an <coughs> active discussion with my bosses, the general secretary and the chairman. What we'll do as a party and what we've started doing is to be moving rounds. And i give you an example. Last week, no, about 10 days ago, some youth in the Seshi areas clashed with the Forestry Commission, uh, you know, over some issues. As an organizer, I had to go there, try to talk to them, let them understand that activities in opposition is totally different in government. Why do I, why do I um, 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 base my premise on this? Something that maybe when your party is in power, you can act and you can act without anybody questioning the act. And we are telling them that we cannot, uh, as a party, subscribe to that ideology because it defeats the NPP's core principles. But to disown them is not the right thing to go. So you disown them, oh, Delta Force doesn't e exist, or Delta Force, I don't know the gentleman. That's what I'm telling you. Some are police station executives. Some are constituency executives. Yeah. But in all fairness, I think sometimes some of the issues are contrived and overblown. And i give you an example. There was an issue last year where NPP Invisible Forces, Joy FM was the lead advocate of that. NPP Invisible Forces attack the NADMO office in Techima. You find now go behind the scenes and nothing like that happened. Somebody just called a, a reporter that we've seen some invisible people here. So yes, as a party, there was a did. report like that? Oh, yes, there was and a report. You, you didn't ask for a rejoinder or complaint about it? Oh, no, no, we did. It. We did spoke they? on it because right. we said eventually when and, it happened. And it was established that it was false? It was false. And there was it no was retraction totally or nothing? It was totally false. Not only Joy, okay. on some networks as well. I see. And we, we said that, look, even though you may not like the dog, you may not like the name, but be fair to it too as well. Okay. And, 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 and something, you, you and I will agree that in all fairness, when was the last time I heard anything about the invisible force? Be candid. When was the last time? After the court situation in Kumasi. The court situation was yeah. Delta Force. When was the last time? Because you said okay, the Delta invisible. Not invisible. Yes. Okay. And the Delta Force issue that happened last year, since then, there, was, there hadn't been any negative reportage. In fact, they then, based on this orientation, some of these groups started helping our uh, municipal assemblies with clean up exercise. You saw that. Okay. And all, all right. That. So, so disbanding by word of mouth, for me, will be, will, be, will be paying less okay. service. But the parties must mm. move beyond just <coughs> saying that, oh, we don't know you or we disbanded, to mm. get to the ground, engage these young men. Some of them, they don't need much. All okay. they want is maybe a phone call. Mm. But as a party, we condemn what happened in Tafo, and we mm. have, as a police, to deal with it decisively. All but right. we will not sit here and play the ostrich that, oh, we, we don't know them. All right. hey, then how okay, am so, I going to mobilize so, the people in <laughs> right. 2020? So, Kaku, listen to... Um, Kofi Adams and Yabwa Benga Samwa, and tell me if you think that what the NCC has begun to do will yield any results with the parties. Well, well, well. Wait, let's, let's hear them first. Oh, okay. It's changed. They acted, they almost killed her if she had not run into her chambers. They would have we killed her. We this one that you are talking cannot, about, yes, that, they are acting, cannot, yeah. that they are acting. Mm -hmm. Why are they acting? They are acting because now they are chewing them. First, they thought it was others. Oh, please. They didn't have okay. blood so running. Let so us, now, let us move now on. it is turning listen, so, onto listen. them. So, so the, 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 I think, I think the, clarion call, onto them. the clarion call from the NCC and others is that the, both parties should disband. Is that it commitment is not, We don't have anything to disband. Okay, no, it, it is the governing party that what, 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 has vigilantes to disband. So don't say both parties. You do. We don't have. Azoka Boys are not a vigilante group. He also says, yes, they are not a vigilante. Why? They are, and, and they are going about maiming people. Uh, they are going about maiming people. It is, it brief, is convenient brief. for the NDC to jump and catalog instances. The historicity of it, you know, and it's very clear, <laughs> that if we want to catalog, it's as tall as everything on each side. 
The question is, going forward in this democracy that we all love, seek to nurture, mm. that we cherish so much, how do we control the phenomenon of free association, aspirations that appear to, for some people, uh, require force? It is not useful to any group. It is not useful to a governing party because it can become a source of blackmail. Once there's an assumption, a feeling that one can use force to exact something, then any group can come together and try and exact something from the government with force. It is not to be encouraged under any circumstances. That is not to say, as Kofi is gleefully trying to list, that it hasn't happened there. It is to say that law enforcement must be strong and courageous on that front. It is to say that we must admit that we have a democracy that has free association and that progressively these groups ought to be able to clean up their act. Right, quickly, let's hear you. <laughs> you know what? Well, well, yeah. I, I know your position on these matters and I respect them. <laughs> what? But the this matter is what strike. <laughs> censorship, censorship. <laughs> uh, you know, they, they are the same. Mm. Huh? Really? They are the same. <laughs> then PP, the language I see doing Ketia and my brother Roxin are speaking was the same language the NPP spoke whilst in opposition. And Samir has uh, reinforced it here. <laughs> there are objective and subjective basis for that phenomenon. But I'm only surprised hearing that apparently the NDC had disbanded <laughs> Azoka, Boys and oh, other have. groups. I didn't know that. <laughs> I, I heard for the first time. Oh, we, we have. have. Okay. But let me tell you something. And maybe you, the lawyers, will even be better. But you see, the w description, the word disband, it's a very difficult one. Mm. If they are not integral wings of the party, recognized by the party constitution, then if you use disband, you okay. may not okay, go. Okay, we have dissolved. Even that. <laughs> but disown is easy. But you see, I realize that some of them, those elements, not the organizational, not the name, because some are nameless and some are faceless. Mm. They are as dangerous as those that have names and can be identified. But if they are card bearing members of the party, you just don't disown them, but you subject them to the discipline regime that the party constitution prescribes, which includes even expulsion. Mm. Of course, beyond that, the state authorities the state, the law enforcement agencies, they have to arrest, investigate, charge, and prosecute, right. and hopefully convict and sentence them by the appropriate institution of state, which yeah. is the judiciary in this case. So you must look at it from two perspectives. If they are not party members yeah. and they are sympathizers, it's difficult to subject them to the party constitution, but they can be disowned. You don't disband a group that does not have an identity, like foot soldiers. And a lot of the foot soldiers across the divide, they engage in this hooliganism. Mm. You see, they start off initially doing things that, you know, look, appear noble. Some of them, because of also problems with the state agencies. You have situations where they are, these groups are launched to protect ballot boxes. Some still do. The ballot box snatch, if you like, yeah. but some to protect their party elites. That's how come the vigilante team came in. Right. For instance, Sami's classic example, the MPP headquarters was invaded. You remember? Yeah. Yeah. Initially, it was supposed to be police people. Mm. The police said it wasn't us. Some people were sent to court. I don't know the status of that case in court. So they, they will tell you the invisible forces were playing the role of a vigilante by protecting and securing the party office. But their conduct beyond that vigilantism, beyond that zone, clearly is hooliganism. They seize state enterprises. They go to the National Head Insurance place and seize it. They go to NYEP offices and seize it. The they chase the people away. They go to DCE offices and seize it. Hospitals. They go to hospitals and seize all those things. You remember, there was one a situation where people seized tender documents yeah. and bent them. Mm. Yeah. They were known as foot soldiers. They didn't have a name. Nameless and, and faceless, but as dangerous them. as those who have names. 
So when we are looking at this phenomenon, we are not just looking at identifiable groups. Perhaps it's even easier when you know the group is identified and you hear their commanders and so talking. It's easy then to locate, right. search, and apprehend. Right. But foot soldiers, what does that mean? They, but they are human beings. They go out there, they perpetrate acts of violence. And we say foot soldiers. So you might have banned Azoka or disbanded Azoka. But your foot soldiers remain very active. Okay, they were very active in their constituency elections. Yes, they okay. did. They, they, so, they, they beat so people. honestly, let's, oh, let's, no. look, let's yes. all agree. Constituency this election. is a dangerous phenomenon. Oh, doing that? And it cuts <laughs> across the divide. Right. For some misinformation, young pioneers are not in that category. Right. <laughs> action troopers, action groupers. Movie squad. No, action troopers were for the, which, uh, the CPP. Mm -hmm. And action groupers, I think, the NLM. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then there was the Tokyo Jews. That's the phenomenon. It's true. You can go back to yes. history. But young pioneers and were not in that category. Mm -hmm. I think that lack of, look, you see, the deterrence element is missing. Mm -hmm. We have not been enforcing the law. We have also politicized the issues. They all come and sit here. Look at that. Rationalize. Mm -hmm. He just, he said publicly in the course of the week that the police should go after them and punish them. But even the thing the is that the, said it, so. it appears that even the police don't believe what he said. When Kwame Safakai asked the police officer, which, which the district of the police commander did you speak? in charge of what, when the burning of the, when the man, Kwame asked him, ah, this, oh, master, where are your politics? Oh. Mm -hmm. That was a policeman. Because totally he, neutralized he, his and have immobilized. Been, have been punished for doing that. Yes, so I'm being careful. It's, it's a history. Yeah, just to Let's be you. honest. It's yes. a history. Mm. And, but we can't continue just That's rationalizing right. and justifying and defending. Okay. So what and this is being done by the politicians. What's your happening now? This, I don't know. You see, again, sometimes mm. investigations too, the quality of investigations. You've gone and arrested two guys. If you don't provide evidence to show that indeed they were perpetrators, if they go to court, the court mm. can jail them. And mm. most of the Not times, this situation, in this situation, for example, they are said to have perpetrated their criminal acts against their own party people. To get their party people to come forward to support with evidence you know, is the, where the, you the, find the, a zero cooperation. During the Kwesibotri uh, committee's uh, rounds. You remember the so many incidents. Kweku is speaking. See, okay. See <laughs> classic example. Yeah. That was at the highest level. Mm. The regional security coordinator, the Kumasi incident, mm, right. he refused to cooperate. Because they were, they were sucking. Oh, the president then should have sacked him. I'm oh. told he's been redeployed. Reassigned. Incredible. So you see, the politicians are part of the problem. The appointing authority should have dismissed that man outright from the national security outfit. Maybe he was told not to. You never know. Don't, no, don't ben, be a security ben, coordinator. Ben, I'm not about to excuse him. He had heard people like Kenya uh, Japan suggest that what was being done to the boys was wrong. If he had taken the step to cooperate with the police mm. to punish these people through the lawful process, he would... He would be but taking that even, his life would be see, in danger. Are you saying we don't have rule of law? His job. We don't have rule of law here. If he's wrongfully dismissed, mm -hmm. there are no avenues. If indeed you, you are wrongfully dismissed. No, where he has a political appointment, then he can be removed. So that is, he can't live his life independent of state security. You see, we should develop that culture. Let people stand up. Look, there was a time there was no democracy in this country. If we had all decided to fold our arms, would we be sitting here doing what we are doing? Please, let's not give any of them excuses. The politicians, the party, in this case the party, the government, the security services, let's put pressure on them. Mm. Let them stop this thing about, oh, if I touch this man, mm. the political authority will take me out. Resign. That's what we are getting to. If we are all going to sit here and rationalize police inertia and impotence, huh? It will continue. If we are going to rationalize political party uh, leadership's uh, decision not to take action, it will continue. Thompson, we are tired, aren't let we? Let me finish. I'll come yeah, to you. Yeah, aren't yeah. we tired? With this matter, we've discussed it over 10 times. Yeah. yeah. Over the last 10, 15 years. Why? Yeah. We, nobody should be excused from the political leadership to the law enforcement agency. Nobody. Okay. Oh, so, God. so, so, Ben, um, hmm. this is. They are lucky we can't set up any hmm. pe people's court. The in in the matter that Kukusa <laughs> to refer to a while ago, 
about uh, the prosecution. Uh, set up a court. I screened everybody. You the prosecution in the in Kumasi, <laughs> that never happened. This is part of what the Attorney General had to write. And the Attorney General, I'm talking about the outfit, not as in Gloria yes. Kufu sitting in Accra. Mm. Part of the report said, on Tuesday, on the 0407-2011, the regional CID, Ashanti, Ashanti, scheduled an identification parade Fantastic. to be conducted at the regional police headquarters, prior to which the complainant and his witnesses, Roja Kwashi and Florence Menu, had been served with notices of participation, but on the third day, complainant and his witnesses failed to attend. Check this again. That even when complainant was contacted on phone that same day to remind him, he told the police he was not interested in the case and would not come to the police station to assist in any further investigations. And this man is still in the service. <laughs> so this is her conclusion. This is, was a, a principal state attorney. She said, from your letter, it appears that the complainant and the witnesses are not willing to cooperate, even though the little evidence on record shows that offenses of assault, stealing, and unlawful damage had been committed. The difficulty prosecution would, however, encounter would be identifying the perpetrators of these acts. So this is where we find ourselves, yeah. when particularly it involves the parties themselves. Yeah. So will See. we ever get to a, you know, an end? Something. There are two things we can do. Put our necks under the gun and behave like ostriches. We think that from the video, faces have been seen. People were there. Do you think that when these two, the 49-year-old and 51-year-old, are brought to court, mm. he can go in the court, swear an oath, and say, I saw them, and stay in Kumasi? You lie. From NDC MPP time, the witness, you see, Kweku has uh, a good point. But whistleblowers, if somebody was to blow a whistle, there is a protection for whistleblowers. Kweku, right. Kweku. This there is, are laws. Yes. We have to improve on these Kweku. things. Bring them you know to why the corruption front. has not got out? There are people, Samson, who've shown that my boss is doing a deal to steal one million. He is sacked. If I work with such a person and I see somebody taking 10 million, I'll put water in my mouth. <laughs> Are you with me? Mm. This Blower Act is there. That you get a percentage of the amount saved and have protection. If my immediate officer in the, in the office is seeing that our boss is taking one million, and I've reported, he has reported and he has been sacked, he's destitute. If I see somebody taking 10 million, I put water in my mouth. So, yes, it, it's, it's, it's different from having a nice casket example. See if you get a weakness to point these two people. You can't stay in, in, in the in the case I just referred to, there were f uh, uh, thirteen of them yes. that were charged. Yeah. So the fear again was that that's a huge number. But where it is one or two, why should people be afraid in you know disowning them? No, if you disown them, can you stay where you are? Uh, but can't the witness, um, um, can the one who blows the whistle, mm -hmm. can't he be given some witness protection? In in law, they, are, they, are, they, are, they are. I want to understand. It that. is a so right who? that is supposed to be given them in law. Yes. Particularly in the in the in the in the era of the of the uh, the whistleblowers act. Yeah. But supposed if, to if we don't practicalize these things, then we might as well Thank just you. forget okay. it. But you but, see but, somebody. But, but, you see somebody. Even where they, they lose their jobs as a result of these things, they are left together with the attorney general. Yes. Are supposed to act to ensure that they are protected. Let's promote that culture. Let me tell you. If the state, if we all stakeholders decide that if there is no deal. The civil service, okay, what you not pass in front of an accounts clerk. If with accounts clerk, you know that Mr. A is taking one million or ten million, okay. and if I report, I'll mm. get ten percent reward and protected. But if we don't do that, okay. 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 we, 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 we need to get to some other yeah, issues. Uh, in, yeah. in conclusion, just mm. a minute. I mm. think the solution does lie in all of us mm. agree that look, what has happened both in the past and present, they are reprehensible. Sure. Mm. And then we come to the conclusion that instead of, because if, if I monitor your argument, so I, regrettably, it's more of a bit uh, one-sided on the Delta Force issue. Mm. 
Mm. And Kweku did indicate that there are some who don't have names yeah. and they're faceless. That's even more dangerous. I yeah, yeah. was referring to the Kwesibotri rounds during that report. So many. A group of unknown NDC young men disrupted the meeting. Mm. So yeah. when we come to that conclusion okay. that, well, what is happening is terrible, reprehensible, but I think what the political parties must do more is regular engagement with our people. Th this is my difficulty. You keep talking about regular yeah. engagement, and yeah. we should appreciate that you will try to do yeah. something. But, but, also but this is my difficulty. The government that this is my difficulty. This is my difficulty, and I wrote uh, uh, you know, a few months back yes. that as a lawyer, mm. I lose my license to practice or my name is erased completely from the role of lawyers mm. when I misconduct myself or I get convicted of a crime bordering on dishonesty. The NDC and the NPP, you have both suspended or sacked members, mm. including very important party members. For acts you have <coughs> claimed brought the name of the party into disrepute. Mm -hmm. That's your omnibus mm -hmm. clause in your constitution. <laughs> you have used that to sanction yeah. very important members of your party mm -hmm. for you. just making certain comments. For both NDC and MPP. So if you want to demonstrate to this country that you, you believe and you want to take an action, how about these people? I they think are, that is where some of them are uh, constituency uh, organizers or uh, polling stations. I think that is where, I think that is where you need clarity them? on the matter. Yeah. Who indicated that many of these people, they don't hold membership cards. But some are. You cannot suspend a member who is not recognized no, as a member. Some these two who have just been arrested. Yes, two who have just been arrested. One are. is a polling station organizer. One is a exactly. But these two people that these two people that who are before the court, if they are found that they did engage in that act, let's also be fair. If the party suspends them now, what it means is that that means we are telling the court that they are guilty. We are, exactly. yes, law, we are still law, investigating Yes, we are still investigating the matter. Yes. Uh, yes. 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 People conduct my, my, themselves in yes. certain ways yes. and they get sanctions internally. You don't know, you know the numbers we are talking about. They are being prosecuted they are going to court. Yes. Yeah. Do you know the numbers Antonio we are talking Akutosoy about? Antonio is the Thousands one who, who faced this. Yes. And he knows that it happened. He, you heard him. I am not discounting yeah. that. But what I'm saying is you cannot suspend somebody who doesn't hold a membership card. But those who do hold, when we get to know that you've misconducted yourself, A, B, C, or D, the party should be bold and we will act decisively. These two who have been arrested, yes. they, yes. Are, they are card-holding members. Yes. They are executives yes. at the local level. Yes. So will you promise and that you do the, something about it? the national will not suspend them. It okay. goes through a process at the you constituency. Okay. Okay. You I hear you, sir. You, you're going to have Over that. I hear you, sir. Uh, my brother, Roxanne, mm. pushed that theory. Yeah. It made me go back to the Cold War days. Mm. <laughs> there was something called balance of terror. <laughs> that appears to be the prescription <laughs> they are pushing okay. or democratization <laughs> of violence. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right, so <laughs> we, we will take a break at this point. And uh, when we return, of course, you're still here on Newsfile, and this is your most authoritative news analysis. Oh, uh, see, to be uh, fair to the yes. uh, NCC, mm. 2017, 10th mm. August, yeah. they actually issue a similar right. statement. Okay. okay. So when we return, we'll continue to see if we can find answers to the questions that have been asked. Why is um, a group of NDC flag bearer hopefuls ganging up against John Mohammed's comeback? But will they succeed? And is it true, as Elvis Efriye Ankara has been telling us, that it is party financiers who are making the fight against corruption mere rhetoric? Because it's impossible. We'll be right back.